All right, in this video, we're gonna take a look at three computer science projects that I find really cool and I think are really inspiring. And hopefully after watching this video, you will be inspired as well. And maybe you wanna go out and create your own computer science projects or programming projects that maybe one day I'll make a video about your projects. Who knows? Let's go. Okay, so first off, we have the Singer 21C car project. And this is a brand new hypercar that's expected to hit the market in 2023. But what does a car have to do with computer science? Well, this car is really cool and not just because it's fast, but mostly due to how it's designed and manufactured. In the old days, you had to have people to design each component of the car, and then you had to manufacture the components with different methods like machining, casting, etc. And what the company behind this car has done is to completely revolutionize actually the car production using computer science and modern technology. To design the components, deep learning generative design is used which is an algorithm based on a neural network. And then this network is trained using a large data set to perform some task like designing a car or just a component of the car. And the way that it does this is very similar to how humans go to university or school to learn new things. But this deep learning system is just a lot more efficient when it comes to creating these designs because it can do like thousands, if not millions of iterations on just a tiny component of that car. And it can do that for the entire car just to create just this like optimized car that will be just perfect essentially, that's the idea. Which is something that would take a human or a team of humans a lot longer to do and it might not even be possible for humans to do that many iterations on something like this. Another really interesting aspect is that the resulting designs are quite organic, which might be a testament actually to how efficient nature is by design and how incredibly intricate and complex these things that we see every day actually are. And when I'm talking about efficiency here, I'm also talking about the amount of materials used compared to how strong these components actually are. Deep learning designs can be extremely strong, yet use less material because the material is only placed where it's really needed to bear the necessary loads. Now, there is, of course, one caveat with these sort of designs, and that's the fact that these deep learning designs can often be very complex in terms of like how they look. They can re require a lot of like curves, twists, and holes, and just like things that are very difficult for machines to manufacture. And so traditional car manufacturing can't really be used for these to create these kind of components. So the designers of the Singer 21C have another trick up their sleeve to resolve this problem. With the help of metal 3D printing, they can actually take the deep learning designs and just print the component exactly as it should be without any compromise. And so the combination of 3D printing and deep learning is a very efficient production model because it requires a lot less materials, which means that the impact on the environment is a lot less and the overall cost of production is also a lot less. And so there's minimal waste and the resulting car is actually a lot lighter because there's less materials used in the car, which makes it a lot more efficient and therefore a lot more environmentally friendly. There's less energy needed to actually move or propel the car forward. It also makes it faster and possibly a lot more fun to drive. And because they use 3D printing, you don't really need huge manufacturing facilities. You just need a metal printer that can print all the components. And also if something breaks and you need a spare part, then you can just print it. And about the production line, this company also uses robots to automate assembly, meaning that the company doesn't have to spend a lot of money on employees and the company can spend this money elsewhere instead. Although I should add that this is something, a fallacy that Tesla also fell into. They tried to automate a lot of their production line. And Elon Musk has actually come out after that saying that I think that was a bit of a mistake. So automating too much can be a bit of a fallacy, but hopefully this will actually work. And so the top trending technology right now is definitely this deep learning and it's going to be for a couple of years, AI, machine learning, that sort of stuff. There's so many cool things that you can do with this technology. That you can always make like an entire video just on that topic. And so next we'll look at the use of AI in neuroscience. And one really cool computer science project in this field is Elon Musk's Neuralink project. And the concept is really simple. To install a chip in the brain that can then interact with the neurons within the brain, the hope is to better understand how the brain works and possibly give humans new, unimaginable capabilities that having a computer chip in your brain could allow. And they've actually already started with some animal trials. As you can see in this clip right now, there's a monkey playing ping pong, uh, that little old school game. 
But the only thing is, he's not using a joystick, he's playing with his brain. Uh, which is just such an insane thing and it's something that... I don't know, it's just such a futuristic concept to not even have to touch anything. You can just use your brain and you can move these players on the screen. Uh, a really cool concept and uh, just such an insane thing. And I think most of us will probably have that thought of like, what if you could just connect your brain to the internet? Uh, maybe, maybe most of us haven't had that question, maybe it's just me. But this chip would actually mean that. It would mean that you'd have the knowledge of anything available online, the knowledge of the entire Wikipedia database or whatever other information you'd like. And with Neuralink, this could actually be a reality at some point in the future. Although it might be a couple years or several years uh, away, but it's still something that's being worked towards and it's something that I think is really cool. And it's really cool how far they've actually come with this even though it's something that's very difficult to do because it's very difficult to experiment. It's very difficult to like put chips in human brains because people generally don't want chips in their brains unless they know that, that actually it's gonna work. So right now they're only at like animal trials. They've done pigs and they've also done this monkey then, this chimpanzee. Uh, but still a really cool thing. And one thing to keep in mind is that as people are living longer and longer, more and more people get old enough to actually get some sort of neurological disease. And one of the early goals of this technology is to help with some of those diseases, which I think is just such an amazing goal to have. This next one that I wanna talk about is going to change the world forever. And this is the quantum computer. And this computer earns its name because it will literally take quantum leaps when it comes to computer speed. To put this in perspective, let's look at what we humans have already achieved over the past several decades when it comes to increasing computer speed. So let's start with the computer that brought mankind to the surface of the moon in 1969, the Apollo 11. This is the computer that these astronauts entrusted their lives to, and it had an astonishing processing power of one megahertz. Today, a regular TI-84 calculator is around 350 times faster than the computer that brought us to the moon. And so your smartphone that you're using in the bathroom, scrolling through Instagram, can actually be around 100,000 times faster. And a modern computer can easily be up to 200,000 times faster than this. So how much faster is a quantum computer? Well, Google claims that their quantum computer is 158 million times faster than the typical modern computer. So as you can see, that is a lot faster than the Apollo 11 and even just a regular computer, which both have basically disappeared here on this chart. Now it's very difficult to compare these things because it's kind of like comparing oranges to apples. Uh, it's not super easily, but I tried to make like a little chart that could showcase somewhat of what that difference would be, just to kind of give you a visual representation of how impactful this quantum computer actually is going to be. Quantum mechanics kind of works in mysterious ways, but it turns out that you can actually have an object that can be in a mix of two states until you look at the object. So a normal computer basically uses binary bits, and these can be either a one or a zero, but a quantum computer uses qubits, which can be one and zero at the same time. And this is called superposition, and this is what allows quantum computers to be extremely fast for certain tasks. And in particular for solving optimization problems where multiple different paths can be chosen for the problems and they need to be explored. An example of such a problem is to figure out how to schedule flights and figure out the best way to run logistics. Another example would be simulations where there are many possible outcomes to consider. To illustrate the point, assume that you have a problem where there are two answers, one or zero. In the classical case, you'd first have to check if the answer is one, and then you'd have to check if the answer is zero. But the quantum computer can be both one and zero, and thus check both answers in parallel. In this case of two outcomes, it's not a big difference, but scaling here is really important. And the more qubits you have, the more answers you can check in parallel, and thus the scaling is exponentially superior to that of classical computers in the ideal case. Quantum computers really only offer an advantage in very specific fields where it comes to down to solving these optimization problems where lots of different paths can be chosen and also need to be explored. And so for simple addition with like two plus two, there's really no gain with quantum computers and that's why regular computers will remain in use. Then there's the practicality that quantum computers are huge, expensive and complicated to construct. 
The problem is that the quantum chip should be cooled almost to absolute zero to work correctly, which is 273 Celsius below zero. And such equipment will only really be affordable by big companies like Google, Samsung, and IBM. But we are only in the early days, so who knows what the future will bring. All right, so I hope this gave you some insight into some of the cool things that are going on with modern technology and modern computer science. And maybe it inspires you to actually go out and do something of your own, create a project of your own. That's always what I try to do, what, what I'm trying to inspire to. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one. So now I'd just like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes on everything from learning how to code, to learning how to be more productive, to learning animation. And I think Skillshare is really great because in addition to giving you access to thousands of different classes taught by fellow creatives, it also gives you access to a learning community of people who are on the same learning journey as you. And personally for me, I've actually been a member of Skillshare before I even started this YouTube channel. And nowadays there's actually courses on Skillshare that are taught by some of my favorite creators. Creators like Ali Abdal with his Productivity Masterclass course, which I really enjoyed. And MKBHD, who's teaching you how to succeed on YouTube and like how he actually creates his videos from scripting to actually finishing and editing one of his own videos, both of which I really enjoyed. And Skillshare has also actually worked as like a supplement to my ever changing and evolving interests. And I've used Skillshare to learn about 3D sculpting and Blender, uh, how to draw, how to do handstands, create logos, animation, uh, lots of different things. So it's been a really useful tool for me personally and one that I highly recommend that you check out. And right now, the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So go check that out. And again, it's completely free. So I mean, you might as well just try it out, see what it is. And again, I highly recommend that you do that. And I wanna thank Skillshare once again for sponsoring today's video. I really enjoy having them as a sponsor for this channel.